Okay, so this game is in its really early stages of development. And I'm just going to cut to the chase. This is something that you really need to start um, paying attention to in case you've never heard of this. When I first saw this user interface, I was just kind of blown away because of how simple and how clean it is. And at the same time, it's just so damn effective. And you're going to get a better example of that when I open up my inventory. So this is the third time I've actually played this game. And up until now, I have not seen any kind of uh, save feature or any kind of checkpoint system. And it gets really intense. You get one life to get this right. You don't really have any idea where you are and what's going on. Uh, almost like being dropped into the opening sequence of, let's say, Dark Souls for the first time. Now, I'm one of those types of guys that, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the environment. I want to see how smart this game is in terms of the physics, in terms of uh, the lighting. I'm just weird like that. And with that said, the physics that's going on in this game are pretty damn awesome. Uh, I, I think it's maybe one of the best I've seen implemented in a video game in quite some time. Now, the physics aren't here just for the sake of being here, okay? Um, it really comes into play in terms of the mechanics, the combat, the way the player will interact with the environment. So let me just give you an example of how it comes into play in regards to combat. And so as far as combat within these types of games, well, you can throw everything out the window because this game changes everything. So the physics will heavily influence your character's animations, for example. But before I do, I'm just going to run around a little bit and bump into objects and just try to give an example of what I'm talking about in regards to the ragdoll physics and so on. So back to the combat, your strikes, your animations, where you're going to hit the enemy, it's all influenced by the physics that I'm talking about. The momentum of your character, the angle that you're striking from, all sorts of goodies are, are actually coming into play. And it's pretty impressive, and you're going to see a little bit of that in a moment. And so basically no two fights will ever unfolds in the same exact manner and that's because there's just so many different animations that are programmed into this game and into the character as well as the physics i can't emphasize enough how much that really impacts this game as well as the mechanics within it it's it's truly amazing um, to be honest with you and i just want to make it clear i don't want to make it sound like this whole game's about combat it's not uh, it's just one small element in this game. The reason why I keep talking about the combat is because it kind of blew me away at how the, you know, the fight sequences would unfold. I actually recorded something earlier. It's called the arena mode. It's pretty much a one-on-one -on -one duel. And I'll just put that at the end of the video. Um, and this will give you a better idea of why the um, combat gets me kind of hyped up and... I don't know, it's just something different. It's something fresh, it's something new, and I love it. And speaking for myself, there really isn't anything out there that captivates me in regards to video games. So when something comes along and it does something unique, it tries to do things differently, and it nails it, well, it kind of gets me excited for gaming again. And that's why I'm kind of feeling like a a little kid in a candy store right now. And you might argue, well, wait a minute, this looks like any other survival horror game. How is it doing something different? The industry is saturated with them. Green light, it's flooded with them. How is this game any different? As a matter of fact, it looks like it's just trying to ride that wave and, you know, capitalize on that trend of these survival horror games. And that's a really good point, and that's a very strong argument. 
But what separates this from the others is that this one's actually delivering while the rest of them are just promising. Okay. And I was watching Jim Sterling the other day, who is one of the very few YouTubers that I watch on a daily basis. And he made a very good point. And he used a very good example. He actually used amnesia. And he broke down how pacing, as well as a lot of different aspects and mechanics within survival horror games, need to be in place in order for them to be effective. And a lot of these so-called survival horror games on the market today are pretty much just a hollow shell of what a true horror survival game is supposed to be. Uh, it may appear to be one on the surface because it has monsters, creepy sounds, and jump scares, but at its core, it's nothing more than just uh, a pretender. And I'm not just picking on horror games. Okay, the entire industry is kind of guilty of offering the same toilet different shit type of approach to video games, where it's the been there, done that syndrome. Unfortunately, a reoccurring theme nowadays is that when you pick up a new game, you kind of feel like you've played either something like it, or sometimes when you get a sequel, it'll feel more like a 1.5 version. Well, you get the point I'm making, or the point I'm trying to make, and I'm sorry for going on such a mad rant. And I'll just end it with this. I'm sure many of you can relate. After pouring so much money into the industry and after this being the case time after time after time again, it kind of gets old and you get sick of the shit, you know, and, um, and here we have this game that's not even close to being finished, and it's probably one of the best games that I've played all year by far, and that says a lot. Okay, so we got a little combat going on here. Now, it may seem like it's just some generic hack and slash, but it's not. I have to be mindful of the direction that I'm swinging, as well as the momentum of my swings, including the back swings. Now, I also have a shield, as you can see, but there is no button, per se, to press to apply the shield. You actually have to use your angle, as well as timing. Um, it's a little complicated to explain. I'll explain more when I show you the arena part of it at the end of the video, I feel like I'm talking way too much about the combat and I want to talk about some of the other stuff that's going on. I liked how I was just able to switch over to my buckler and my hand axe without having to compromise the torch. I was able to lay the torch down, keep the area lit, uh, finish combat, and then pick the torch back up. Just a small little thing. Um, but they add up. There's quite a few of them in this game. And I'm using my mouse right now to open the door. I'm pretty much clicking on the door and then moving the mouse uh, towards my body, which opens the, the door. As far as the environment and the things laying around um, within this dungeon, you can pick up pretty much anything within reason. What I mean by that is... I wouldn't be able to pick up that fucking tree log in real life, so they kind of apply that uh, realism, uh, for lack of better words, in the game. Although I know for sure that there are guys, uh, like those crazy strong guys from Iceland that could pick up those tree chunks and throw them like they were toothpicks. And then you have some items that you would think you could move, like that table, uh, but you cannot. And I'm sure there's a reason uh, for that. A very simple inventory management. Okay, there aren't any slots. If you can carry an item, you just move it over to that designated box. You can overlap things. It doesn't matter. Um, I appreciate that very much. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spend some time in progress through the game. And the next time you hear my voice, I am going to have time warped about 40 or maybe 50 minutes worth of gameplay into the game. Okay, well I didn't progress um, that much further into the game like I initially wanted to. And that's only because I thought that some of these sequences that are coming up are worth watching. 
So if I have to, I will jump around a little bit in order to give you the best uh, variety uh, in terms of what you can expect in regards to the gameplay. I'm hanging out over by the doorway because there's an enemy there. And this game has a fog of war mechanic going on. So if you are not in the line of sight of a certain area, um, it will then turn dark. So even though it's a top-down-ish type of perspective, if I were to, say, shut a door, well, I would no longer be able to see what's behind the door. And if you're wondering how I'm moving my character around, well, you can either use the mouse to just click and move, or you could use the WASD keys. The keys are rebindable. Right now I'm using my left mouse click as the action button. So if I want to pick an item up, I will just click on it and drag it. Now if I want to engage in combat, you need to press a key to toggle the combat on and off. In this case, it would be the tab key. And again, I love how simple the inventory system is. And although the enemies do have a line of sight, uh, they are not overly aggressive. You might be wondering about the camera angles. Well, right now I'm using the scroll key to zoom in and out. If you wanted to look in a certain direction where your character is facing, you would hit the space bar and it would auto center towards that direction. As far as the camera angles ever getting in the way, in a negative manner in terms of the gameplay. Up until now the camera angles has not impacted my play in a negative manner but it does take a little time to get adjusted to the controls and so sometimes that does come into play and that's only because you just need to get adjusted and it's not that the controls are necessarily overcomplicated or anything like that. It's more or less that they're implementing their own kind of controls in conjunction with the uh, way you use the camera angles. Uh, it's a little different and it just takes a little time to get used to it. I brought you guys ahead a little bit again because I don't want to spend the entire video showing you um, me getting lost or just looking for items. Now, I had a lot of instances where I would run into an enemy, and unless I aggroed them, or unless I uh, went into combat mode, they would pretty much just ignore me, uh, look at me, and um, walk the other way. But I have found that there has... Oh, well, here's an enemy. Let's see what this one does. Well, that one, as you could see, just turned around and pretended that I wasn't even there. And by the way, the hair physics are pretty on point. I'm not sure if you're uh, picking that up. But like I was saying with the enemies, well, I got pretty comfortable with thinking that as long as I didn't get too close or bother them, that they would just leave me alone. And so I found myself getting a little bit comfortable. Uh, you know, I thought I had the game figured out in terms of the enemy AI and I'm not talking about the game in general I'm just talking about this one particular area and that's when I ran into <laughs> a few enemies that that were a little bit more aggressive let's put it that way um, as soon as they saw me they would start to stalk me they wouldn't chase me or run after me, but they would just stay on me until I either ended up at a dead end or turned around to fight them. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, but those enemies that tend to be more aggressive are usually packing a very big weapon, uh, whether it's a type of spear, but they're usually holding something very large and sharp. Okay, well, I'm just going to jump around a little bit for the sake of not spoiling too much for you guys. I want you guys to experience certain things for the first time um, when you're playing. And then I'm going to get into that arena combat <clears throat> Excuse me, that I was talking about 
uh, which I think you guys will appreciate and enjoy. And another thing, I apologize for my voice. Um, sometimes it tends to have a mind of its own. Uh, my health is usually for the worse <laughs> more than it is for the better. Uh, so I apologize about that. Okay, and this is one of the tactics that I will use if I particularly don't want to deal with an enemy or a couple of enemies that I know are hiding in the next room. What I'll do is I'll just start to stack a ton of items on top of each other. Um, and up until this point, I have yet to see uh, any of these enemies be able to actually penetrate the door once you have enough stuff stacked against it. The last game that gave me the creeps, I believe, was Outlast. And, oh, that PT demo for the PlayStation 4 was also um, kind of spooky. Now, here's the thing about this game. Not only does it give me the creeps, but I'm always uh, in a state of terror because I know that at any given moment, all the progress that I have made can just disappear um, just like that. And by default, it encourages the player to pay attention, especially when he or she is in combat. Uh, you can't just swing wildly. You won't just swing wildly because you will realize that <laughs> with every swing, or uh, more importantly, every miss, it could be game over. And that's one of the things that makes me gravitate to this game. Um, because of all these elements in play, the progression feels meaningful. It means something. I feel like that I'm accomplishing something. It feels like there's always a risk and reward in play. As well as every time I find an item um, that's going to make me stronger or be able to defend myself more. It's going to be all that more meaningful because my survival depends on it. Now, as you can see, this enemy took a good chunk of health off of me. My health bar is on the left-hand side. As you can see, there's a part of the yellow that's kind of faded out. Now, that part of my health bar will regenerate. Where you see the red, that health will not come back. I have yet to find potions, although it looks like I have an abundance of potions. <laughs> Every single one of those bottles are empty, but they allowed me to pick them up, so I'm guessing they're going to be useful in some way. Uh, maybe I'm going to be able to fill them. I'm not sure, but I am like a pack rat. If they're going to let me carry something, I'm going to take it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start to wind this video down. I'm going to screw around a little bit with the physics and this barricade for a little bit. Um, while I just give you a quick summary and then make the transition over to the arena that I was speaking about earlier. And so my cousin tells me, look, you got to check this game out. You really got to check this out. And, you know, let's just say that he hasn't said something like that in a long time. At first, I was skeptical. I thought he was trolling me. I thought it was maybe a, um, a game like Honey Pop or something where I was just going to get a kick out of it. Um, but instead, it was this. And, and at first, to be honest with you, I did not know what to make of this. Uh, especially that it was in an early stage of development. At face value, I just thought it looked like, you know, any other generic um, horror type of uh, dungeon crawl that you see an abundance of uh, everywhere you look nowadays, so like a dime a dozen. The moment I woke up in that dungeon, uh, I went over to the torch at first, I didn't know how to pick it up. It took me <laughs> a couple attempts to pick it up. Finally, I picked it up. And then I pressed the sprint button. And I ran as f fast as I could. And then I tripped over 
a chair or a stone. I forget what it was. And I ended up doing a face flop that Ric Flair or Greg the Hammer Valentine would be proud of. And so with that said, the game pretty much had my attention from the get-go. And it hasn't let it go up until right now. And I can't say that about many games. I'm excited that this exists. I'm excited to share it with you. And um, when something like this happens, it kind of rekindles the spark inside of me that pretty much has its moments, okay? You know, year after year of the monotony of the aggressive marketing of the season passes, the generic rehashed games that uh, are just released annually, even, even more so. It, it just gets to the point where you kind of lose hope. And that little, you know, that fire in your belly that you have for gaming, it starts to starts to dwindle a little bit. And and sometimes I would get upset because everyone didn't feel the same as I do or as I did. But I have to understand that I'm an older guy who's been involved with gaming for many years now. So the younger generation doesn't have the same perspective that I do because they haven't been uh, putting up with the same nonsense year after year after year. They still have a, a little ways to go to get to uh, the point of frustration um, that many of us are at. And I hope that that doesn't happen for them. I hope something does give. I hope something does break. And I hate using the word exist. I think that's one of the top 10 words that gets thrown around a lot this generation. But I am truly happy that this game does exist because if games like this did not exist, if they did not come out, and this one just came out of nowhere, I never heard of it, okay? Um, if they didn't exist, um, I, I, I can honestly say that. And there would be probably a good chance that I would not only not be making this video, but also my mouse and keyboard as well as my controller would be hung up for good. And um, again, it's not because I got older and just faded away um, from gaming. It's more or less that I think I would have quit out of frustration. And uh, these games keep me going. I want to thank these developers for following their heart and their soul when it came down to their vision. And, you know, as soon as you play this, you're going to know right away that this is a project that was made from passion. A lot of people don't understand that. We have a lack of innovation because it's kind of risky nowadays. Developers are scared to take chances. Not all of them, um, but some of them, especially the ones that have a juggernaut publisher breathing down their back. So we have an opportunity to explore a video game and a bunch of developers who are trying to break that mold, who are going against the grain and creating content that they believe in. And... Um, I have been having a good time with this game. I highly recommend that you, at the very least, uh, check into it. And I will now show you some of that gameplay of the arena that I promised you. And so thank you for watching. I never ask for you guys to subscribe. I never ask that. I never put that in any of the descriptions. Um, but I'm going to ask you to please share this video, and um, if you can, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. I am currently trying to work on a project which I believe is very worthwhile and could use all the support and help that I can get. Thanks a lot for watching, and here is that uh, arena footage. <laughs> Take care.